Have you ever been scrolling through Instagram and you saw some amazing model airplane pictures and you wanted to know how that person took those great pictures? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how great model airplane pictures are taken. We're going to use my unique style of where I take model aircraft out into the wilderness and out into the wild. And I take actual pictures of those planes in natural and sometimes man-made settings with great lighting. So, so I'm going to show you by going around the city of Des Moines here. And I'm going to stop at a bunch of locations and take some pictures. And then I'll show you how to edit them and turn them into great model airplane pictures. Let's get started. So in order to protect the models while we're driving, I just have them here in a box. And I have some protective wrapping. I have the models in here and I just have them here in my uh, back seat. So this is a good way to transport your models if you want to keep them well protected. Uh, you want to keep them in fairly tightly packed because that way they won't move around or jiggle around as much. So this is a good way when you're transporting stuff to keep them in good shape. My camera settings today are shutter speed 1 to 640, f-stop 7.1, and an ISO of 100. We are shooting right around noon or midday. Alright, here is location 1. We're here at the soccer field near Des Moines International Airport. And so let's see how these photos turned out. Alright, let's give this shot a try over here by the snow pile. It looked pretty cool. So I also found this really cool water patch here by the snow pile and so I'm going to be doing some reflection shots here with this and a couple of the models. The Delta Connection CRJ900 looks really, really nice in this lighting. How about that for a reflection shot right there? Alright, this is our next location. It's near this uh, grain elevator, which is actually all three of these locations so far, I guess four. All four of these locations have been really close to each other, within a mile of each other, so that grain elevator is just over there. I was trying to get a good picture of an airplane in the background. Lighting here is not ideal, but I'll, I'll still be able to make some interesting photos out of it. I'm trying out this angle right over here. Uh, looks like it'll work better for what we're doing. I've been uh, parked back here by this um, industrial warehouse area where they store a lot of tractor trailers and I found this part as I was about to drive off. Great views for taking pictures of model airplanes. So I'm going to do that right now. As I'm just scrubbing through these photos, I'm really, really happy with the results. I was trying to get some good photos of the Air China 333 with a background that made sense with a nice industrial looking background. And I think I finally got it. I got the grain elevator finally. It took three attempts. But I finally got it. And I got this uh, building here in the background. With some red and gray on it. Which matches the color scheme with the blue sky. It just looks so good. I'm really happy with these photos. So you'll definitely be seeing these on Instagram. Uh, by the time this video goes up. Hopefully uh, at least one picture of every aircraft is up on Instagram. So yeah. But yeah I'm very happy with these results. And um, particularly the third location. Man, these photos have really turned out to be why I wanted them too. So stay tuned to my Instagram for some great pictures. Welcome to downtown Des Moines. Here we have our next photo location. Final location is in this abandoned parking lot here with some beautiful views of downtown. And I put the model down here so we can get some awesome views like that. And at times when I do shots like this, I do get very, very low to the ground field to get a really good shot from like this angle. 
but that's sometimes what you need to do to get good thoughts. So yeah, I'm really happy with these uh, photo suits. Let's go home and edit these pictures. All right, we're now here in Adobe Lightroom and we're gonna import our photos to edit. So we go to File, Import Photos and Videos. Then we're gonna pick the drive that we want. And we're gonna import all these photos from today. So these appear to be stuck in two separate batches. Sometimes my camera will separate photos in, into its own batches, file batches. So we're gonna pick the ones that we want to edit and import, and then we will edit them. Sometimes this process can take a little bit just because it takes a while for all this stuff to load. Remember, these are literally large, large files. Uh, I usually suit so that my photos are pretty big because they're raws. And then from there, let's wait for these to import. And from there, it's, you can easily end up with 20 gigabytes of raw files coming in. All right, so our first batch has now imported. We're gonna import the second batch here from later in the day. All right, we've selected these. I'm gonna import them as well. And then I will edit a sample photo for you all to look at. All right, so we're gonna edit this picture right here, which is one of my favorite pictures that I got. So when you're looking at a sequence and you wanna pick what photo you want to edit. So for example, here I have a sequence where I think it's four photos. I got this one, this one, this one, and this one. All four, very similar. So what you want to do is when you want to pick the photo, you want to pick framing, and you want to pick quality and focus. So for the focus of this, probably the first one is actually the most in focus for the entire aircraft. But I like the framing better on this fourth one here. I like the the downtown view on this shot just a little bit better. In addition, this photo has a little bit less glare up here. And out of all four of these, it has the least on the aircraft. So we're going to pick this one. So the first things you want to do is when you're in Lightroom, you want to scroll down here to this panel that says Lens Corrections. And you want to click both of these option tick boxes up top. Particularly if you're running with a camera that's known to have some issues. Uh, mine has some issues and this basically fixes some of the lens issues that it has. It also nicely identifies the lens that you have. And I use my Tamron 18-400. Which does have some haloing and like curvature on the edges of the photos that tends to do. So this will fix those issues right away. That's the first thing you want to do. Next, I always go to this tab. Which is the details tab and I crank the details up a little bit. I usually do somewhere between 70 to 80, so we're going to do 74 for this one. And I also turn up the detail level a little bit as well. This will increase the crispiness of the image, as you can see right there. Brings out a lot of details in the image. Next up, we'll go to our main tab here, which is the basics. Now, you're going to use mostly this tab for the most part when you're editing. And I'm going to show you some other tools you can use as well. But I'm going to increase the exposure, because on this one, the exposure is a little bit on the low side. I think I shot this one at f7.1. I did shoot f9 for a couple of these images, but f7.1 for this one. We're going to turn up this exposure here, because the histogram, which you also want to have that sewing. You want it to have your histogram right about in the middle. So most of your data is right here in the middle, it's spread evenly across the entire histogram. If it's like here, it's all like really towards the left side, it's too dark. And if it's all here towards the right, it's too light, as you can see. So you want to have a nice medium level exposure, maybe right about there. So that's approximately what you want for your exposure. And then next, there are some things I always do for some of my images. Because one of the things that can be a real challenge is getting the shadow detail to sew up. So there's a way to do this. First off, I'll increase my contrast a little bit. And then I'll increase the shadows. So what this does, this is increase the disparity between the light and the dark areas. But also increasing the shadows brings out the details in the shadows. So you can see some more detail here underneath the aircraft. Despite the fact that it's clearly a darker section of the image. So that really helps there. I'm not going to touch the white or the black levels. And I don't need to touch the highlights. Because I shot this photo correctly with the sunlight behind me. So it makes for a nice image. We are going to increase the clarity. This helps a little bit just to just to get some of those details out even more. And then I usually will increase the uh, saturation vibrance a little bit. I'm going to go for 11 on this one. I like how that looks. Yeah, that looks good. All right, and then we're going to make some adjustments. We're going to improve the frame a little bit here. So I go to the frame tool. I always 
do about this standard aspect ratio here. Now because we are trying to shoot with the buildings in the back, I'm not going to do as quite as tight of an of a edit up to the aircraft as I normally would. However, we are going to level this. There we go, looks pretty good. I want to get the fuselage in here correctly. Looks pretty good right there. Yeah, I like how it looks. So, uh, we pretty much have this image ready to go. I do always, particularly for areas where there's a solid color in the background, I do always do a check here for dust spots. On some portions of the image, dust spots aren't very sewable. They don't sew up. In, like, like in this area, you're not going to see dust spots too much. But like in the sky region, you will see dust spots a lot. So I go is I go to dehaze and I crank it all the way up to max. Or you can go the other way and crank it to zero. I usually crank it to max. And I just look for dust spots. If I see any, I remove them with this tool right here. So let's say there's a dust spot here. And click here, it'll pick a pixel nearby and it'll fill in that imperfection. So on this image, I didn't find any. So we're just gonna set dehaze to zero. Set it back to neutral and then that's it. So we're now gonna export this image. And I always export to the day that I took the photo. So today is the 16th of March. So we're gonna go 2022-03. Dash 16 and then that will export and save the image which will now be ready for use. So that's how I take the pictures. You'll see a screenshot of it here up on Instagram. I'm really happy with the results of this image and several others. This was a great photo shoot and I hope you all enjoyed learning how I take photos in a fun and engaging way. So go out there, take pictures of your model aircraft, tag me on Instagram wherever you post it so I can see what your results look like. And with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and God bless you.